Hi and welcome to the Martin Bell Show, hopefully you've been keeping well and in today's video I'm going to be reading from the Daily Mail online from the money section of this newspaper and it's going to be talking about should you keep cash in your pension to become a buy to let landlord or keep your retirement saving invested in the stock market. So we're going to read for the article and see what they say. So same here, over 55s will be able to cash in their entire pension after sweeping, sweeping reforms this April. Opportunity that could tempt many to plunge their lifetime savings into the property market and become buy to let landlords. Personally, after reading um, a book by Grant Cardone, um, I personally wouldn't want to be a buy to let landlord on um, one door or one unit. And they'd have to be multiple units um, just in case something happens, you get a bad tenant. Um, you never know, they could damage the property, not pay, and then you're losing money from not collecting rents. And if you had a nift once the tenant leaves, and you've got to get re done up to a reasonable standard, and then you'd have to find a decent tenant. So personally, for me, at this moment in time, I just want to accumulate wealth into the stock market. Once I've accumulated enough wealth in the stock market, I may look in the future to become a buy to let landlord, but it wouldn't be in just one door. If I was going to buy one door, it would be a buy, renovate, sell, sell on, and repeat until I can have multiple units on one um, development. Well, that would be a long way off for now, for anyway. And before I go any further, I'd like to announce that this does not constitute as financial advice. This is just me documenting my journey, my giving my thoughts and my feelings for educational and for motivational purposes only. For those wealthy enough to drum up a big enough and to put it to buy or outright, this is a very popular way to generate an income, potentially make capital gains in the longer term, as health prices continue to rise in many parts of the country. Some newly flush pension savers might well jump at the chance to Britain's growing army of amateur landlords, given that the interest rates remain stubbornly low and shares are volatile, notwithstanding this week's record for C100 high. Well, I think overall, I think overall the FTSE is going to be higher, FTSE 100 is going to be higher in 10 to 20 years than it is today, because I do see that I do think the FTSE 100, the UK one, and well, it is UK, it is, it's going to be better than it is in the past. I think Britain is going to be in a better situation than it is in the past because we've got newer technologies, newer skills, newer ideas, concepts. And I think the world will be a better place in 20 to 30 years. So yes, there are going to be problems along the way, but nothing is perfect. But there are pitfalls to access and buy to let in this way. First and not least, the huge tax bill could face if you withdraw all your large proportion of your pension to buy a property. A move that could easily propel you into the higher 40% or even 45% tax bans. That's before you even embark on the process of finding and acquiring the right property, filling it with the suitable tenants and dealing with administration's hassles or being a landlord. And that's the thing, I don't want to be getting phone calls at 2 in the, in the morning. Oh, something's leaking, or oh, the boiler broke, or the, the tap won't turn off. It's like, I would want someone to manage the property on my behalf, and I would want to pay someone a decent standard so they actually did care and did a good job to manage and take care of the properties and the tenants. But that is a way off. Personally, I'm not looking in to become a landlord just yet. I'm looking forward to accumulate mass wealth in the stock market at this moment in time. And if I go into real estate, it will be, do, be done through um, REITs. So retirees seeking a reliable income stream plus the possibility of their growth of their savings. And this, this, if you only have one door and that money stops coming in, you've got to cover all them costs that they would be paying as well as you've got to try to get the fees and cost of trying to kick them out and get them out if they're not paying or they're damaging the property and there's a lot of legal problems to have and is it really worth the hassle for just one door so in terms of returns research into popular investments suggests that share investors have ranked in more than 30 years over 30 years but homos beat that during the period of rampant property price inflation since 2000 well, you still have won if you're still in the stock market, so you can't complain. 
for those weighing up what to do once they are unfettered access to lifetime savings in April, here's a guide what's involved in taking buy to let investments routes. Do, do you want to become a buy to let landlord to fund your retirement? Buy to let property has provided an attractive investment for many people, especially given the alternatives in recent years. The financial crisis triggered huge stock market volatility. Yes, there's huge volatility, but this also gives you an opportunity to get something at a cheaper rate. I'm buying mine mostly in broad-based ETFs, so if it drops out of the FTSE 100, 100 top 100 publicly traded companies, something else will replace it. And that is also true for the S&P 500. And if it gets damaged enough, the S&P 500 or the FTSE 100 becomes unreputably repairable, you're going to have to, more to worry about than me losing a, uh, a sizable amount in them, the ETF to say. <laughs> Those seeking better returns have turned it to property market. And unless they were very imprudent or unlucky, their bet has paid off handsomely. Hopefully it has for them. Prices have to have stayed uh, buoyant and not only providing capital gains but making home ownership prohibitive for many people who are forced to carry on renting which has provided a convenient stream of tenants for buy to let landlords. The government has used various measures to prop up the housing market like its funding for lending and help to buy schemes. Now its pension freedom reforms could create a new boom. A new buy to let boom potentially pushing up the prices again making this an even better investment prospect personally i am really happy with the, the indexes and um, because i re i'm not too sure i think housing is uh, really overvalued at this moment in time unless you're if you're like a low skilled worker or uh, unskilled worker it's very or practically impossible to get on the housing ladder in a safe environment or in a safe area or community because there's more antisocial behaviour and obviously the housing is cheaper there but then you're not in such a, a great environment. I'm not saying that people are bad but the environment can be not very safe sometimes. So if you're currently pondering whether to cash in your pension in April to use it to get to the buy to let business, here's a number of issues which might help boost sway your decision. Should you could be heavily taxed or withdrawing big sums from your pension savings. Everyone aged over 55 will be able to access the whole pension pot, but just like now, only 25% of retirement savings will be tax free, while the rest will be taxed as income. What I'm thinking of doing, if that still is in effect at 25%, I'll probably take that lump sum and then invest that 25% into the ISA, it's still around, and obviously if it's more than uh, the annual allowance, I will um, just slowly um, put it in, in each year over many years. If it has to be that way, then so be it. Hopefully they will increase the ISA allowance, and probably will by then. I will just um, put it over into the ISA and then obviously have more dividend pay payments and uh, tax exempt, and that's a way of um, keeping more of my wealth. Workers used to simply pay the basic rate of tax employees might realise dip into freely into their pension pot and retirement will put them into a higher rate tax bracket. The 20% rate tax threshold will be £10,500 a year from next April, while the 40% higher rate of tax will kick in those earnings more than £42,285. People will be able to avoid getting a big tax bill by taking small enough sums to keep them below the higher rate of annual threshold. But that could mean that they won't have enough for a deposit or a buy to let property, let alone to purchase one outright. Financial services from Hargreaves Lansdowne recently compared how the set three separate income strategies likely to, to be popular with retirees. Its scenarios were all involved somewhere with £300,000 pension pot looking to preserve capital and making a sustainable income. The statutories were investing his buy to let property, withdrawing all the money to place in ISAs and combining ISAs with income drawdown. If found paying tax up front for accessing all your retirement savings, you would be significant drag on the future returns. See the table below. Right. So, 
I know nicer. So you have 368,416 pounds. Um, total income, net annual income. Um, it's 14,700 pounds, so not bad. Um, property, 8,600. So it does look like the ISA does come up ahead. Well, if I'm reading it right. So on how to avoid paying too much tax when taking your pension cash, number two. Like all other buy to let investors, you will have to do your sum and work out whether it is really your best option for you. Compare the potential return rental income to what you get on your income based investment fund or fixed rate savings account and also investigate the income drawdown scheme where described below. You also need to be prepared to do some research into the best area to buy in and the type of property that will be easiest to rent out there before making a purpose for purchase. That is why it's so important to do your due diligence and your research before making any investment decisions. So read out more here about the financial risks and rewards for buy to let, how to find the right property. Unless your pension pot is very big, you'll need to look for a buy to let mortgage. Be prepared to shop around or use specialist brokers. Check out to buy to let mortgage tables to get the idea of typical deals. Number four. Owning a buy to let property brings administrative hassle from renewing building insurance to keep the tax man up to date, to perhaps meeting new energy efficient rules among others. Read more here about the tax issues and what you need to declare. Number 5. As well as keeping up with the paperwork, be prepared that renting out a property is likely to involve some practical hands on work, and yes it is, and yes it will. Unless you are prepared to pay a letting agent to take care of the, every last thing for you and you can find one that you trust to do this properly, you will have to deal with tents and cope with anything that arises yourself. So that does mean if you do deal things yourself, you may never be able to fully enjoy your investment because you, you could hopefully you won't be getting many phone calls, but if you had multiple properties and you started to do it itself. You could get like, phone calls two in the morning, um, leaking pipe, the place is flooding. It's like anything on holiday. So, do you really want to deal with that? Yes, if you are um, starting to build your nest egg, I would say go ahead for it. But if you're later, like, more progress further on, maybe it's something to um, reevaluate. Maybe. So that can range from broken boilers or disputes with neighbours, which could be a real big hassle, especially if there's disputes with neighbours. Neighbours don't get along and they make things hard for one another. Tenants sneakily moving their mates in to cut their rent bill, so that means subletting. So that means they're renting out to the people who are renting from you, and they're obviously cut, cutting their expenses, but obviously there's legal problems because multiple people shouldn't be living in the property um, bear in mind because it's not a HMO MHMO? HMO multiple house occupancy I think it stands for bear in mind that you might fall up up to so much practical challenges right now but probably becomes less able to do as you grow older consider whether a younger family member or friend is prepared to help out if it gets too much or if you get sick and that is something to remember People sadly do get sick and unable to do things, so it's good to have multiple plans in place in case you're no longer able to be a, a full on landlord. You can always set up, sell up, but if you're suddenly forced to do so through ill health, the property market is not necessarily right and most favourable, and also it's not as liquid as well. Okay, so now it says here, do you want to keep your pension invested to provide you for old age? Using an income drawdown scheme to fund your retirement instead of buying an annuity is set to become a far more popular option following the pension freedom reform. And yes, I don't want to buy an annuity. Well, I get a crappy deal. Well, I get guaranteed income. But then again, it's just it's not going to be as good because um, obviously inflation is going to happen for many years. So it's going to standard of living is going to go down with time, and they're going to get the benefit of the investments of appreciating in value. 
and that's why it's going to be about having multiple investments so if things aren't going so well I have to cut back a little bit until they um, re repair themselves. So flexible income drawdown allows you to take sums out of your pension pot as when you want while the rest remains invested and that's what I'm going to probably do myself personally and I'm going to have the ISA to hopefully to cover all the bills and the SIP will be a supplementary income for like luxury treats. But until this year it has been restricted to wealthy people who can prove that they have other guaranteed income. Annuities provide retirees with guaranteed income for life but are deeply unpopular due to their recent poor returns and purchases have already fallen dramatically. So you don't get as good as deal, they're not gonna give you a good deal, they're gonna take on they're gonna take most of the scoop from you and not give you the best deal. But buying annuities is at least so straightforward and involves no further work or decision making once you commit and that is it. I suppose if you um lost the ability to make the decisions then maybe um, if you don't want to longer make the decisions you're going to have to be willingly and knowingly accept that you may not be getting the best deal but then again if you have certainty of money coming in that's good but you're going to have to remember inflation is going to happen and obviously that's going to be the same amount of money each month or a year and it's not going to be buying as much each year so your standard of living will go down slightly as you grow older but then again you don't need to spend as much as, as you're older because you generally have accumulated all the things you need to accumulate to buy them. So choosing the right drawdown plan in the first place is more complicated but it's vital. You want your retirement savings to provide an income and hopefully keep growing as well but will be depend upon the underlying investments in the scheme even after it's all set up you will need to keep reviewing these to ensure that they all perform well enough. There are seven, several different types of drawdown schemes, so read around up of what's available and now what might be launched in the future. The government is offering everyone free guidance sessions on pension freedom, but those who give specialised personalised advice, you certainly won't be told which investment funds to put your money in or where to switch your money if they are performing. You can turn a you can turn to a financial advisor who will levy an initial fee for the startup work and then an ongoing fee if you want your investments reviewed and rebalanced on a regular basis, such as every year. Personally, I don't think I'm not going to be doing that because most of my wealth will be in uh, broad-based indexes that. Um, cash flow currently and they drip me a certain amount each month or every quarter or biannually or even um, a yearly but personally I prefer quarterly or monthly if I can. The cost of financial help has dropped 14% in the past year according to research, recent research by advisors website. Unbiased however it's found that the cost of advice on getting up a drawdown scheme for £300,000 pension fund and stayed at £3,000 for the past three years. It might be worth stumping up the advisor fees to get your finances in order and start of retirement. Try to get through word of mouth, search on here. Mm -hmm. If you can't afford to help or don't think the advice is worth the cost, you will have to do your own homework, which is fair enough. And that's why you must do your own research and make, make sure that you fully understand it before you pull the sugar and execute the order. So about how to choose between an advisor and doing it yourself and here about to become more savvy with pension investments. So you can decide whether you've had enough after a certain point and buy an annuity which was left of your pot again some certainty over your income and unities are poor value at present but might look at a better prospect when interest rates start in rising again which is true but then again interest rates could drop again as well so you never know what's really going to happen i personally don't think i will be picking an annuity um Read some of the questions. Um, yeah. 
so some of the comment sections aren't, aren't that great so and that is an interesting thought um, to have so if you found this video useful and informative and you want to see more news articles then please feel free to subscribe to my youtube channel um, my youtube channel name is this is the Martin Bell Show. If you click the subscribe button and the bell notification button, you get notified when I next release a video or even if I go live. I also am um, playing video games, sometimes live and sometimes let's plays, as well as I document my stocks and shares ISA and my stocks um, um, SIP self-invested personal pension and portfolio right from the beginning to where it is at present and I'm going to document the whole journey right from the beginning to where it is to the present moment so if that sounds cool and you want to see more I look forward to seeing you in the next video take care for now guys bye bye and I'll see you all soon